And with an untrained eye, you tell which mosquito species you have at your home. There's very, there's a lot of different mosquito species at your home in the Kuchal Valley. So with an untrained eye, you could think, oh man, just a, a mosquito is like, oh, I see these every day, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you today which species of mosquito transmit the West Nile virus, which mosquitoes you really need to be careful about. So today, I'm going to be telling you what West Nile virus is, I'll inform you which mosquitoes transmit the, the West Nile virus disease, and the sudden rise of West Nile virus in the Kachal Valley. And last, and not least, what can you do to protect yourself against mosquitoes? First, West Nile, West Nile virus is a mosquito-borne disease that, is original, that was originally found in Africa. In 1999, it was first detect, detected in the eastern United States. Since, since then, it has spread throughout the United States, according to westnile.ca.gov. How do people get West Nile virus? That's a very good question that you need to know about. So, West Nile virus comes from a host. A host is either a horse or a human. They're dead and horse, is dead and, dead and host. They can't transmit the disease whatsoever. They need a mosquito to come and bite them, and then the infected, the infected mosquito needs to go and bite somebody else. Then that's how you get the disease. So basically, if, if if you see mosquitoes out there, not all mosquitoes are gonna have the West Nile virus disease because they need a they they need a feed on the blood of an infested host, infected host, and then they need to bite you. So, how soon can people get sick? Well, if you get the West Nile virus, you can may never get sick. You you can have it, and you, you will be like regular, you know, your regular self. But if and there are some cases where you start developing signs, and they usually start developing from 3 to 14 days. What are some signs that West Nile virus is in your area? Well, West Nile virus is, is, is a strong virus to um, smaller species, for example, birds. So if you, see, if you see some birds dead in your area, that's a good example that West Nile might be in your area. So you can call your local uh, vector control and they come and take the bird and they do some further testing to see if West Nile is present, present in your area. That's how they found out that West Nile virus was present in Cathedral City on um, Plumley, Plumley Road. So, which mosquitoes transmit the West Nile virus disease? Well, the, the two popular ones right here in the Kachal Valley are Culus tarsalis and Culus quinquefacius. Excuse my language. <laughs> Culus tarsalis, also known as the Enphalitis mosquito, it averages about 190 eggs every time they reproduce. That's a lot of mosquitoes, man. According to rci.ruggers.edu, and Culus quinsipactus, also known as the southern house mosquito, they, they average about 100 eggs every time they reproduce. So in both of these species, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of eggs that they reproduce. But then again, like I said before, they need to bite an infect, infected host in order to transfer it to somebody else. What is some of the reasons why there's the sudden rise of West Nile virus in the Kuchal Valley? Well, he, here's, here's what's going on. Well, as, as the economy has gone bad, a lot of people have been losing their homes. And, and people just leave. When people leave, they, they have pools, regular swimming pools in the back. And they leave them filled. So what happens after uh, a period of time, around two weeks or so, they start getting algae, it starts getting uh, what they call a green pool. It starts looking greenish. So, mosquitoes start breeding in it. And, you know, a pretty good sized swimming pool is a pretty large swimming pool. And just imagine all of that with little mosquito larva. That's a lot of mosquito larva. Uh, another, one, another reason why the sudden increase of, of uh, West Nile virus in our communities is lack of knowledge. You know. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you, 
you exchange your tires, for example, you exchange your tires and you leave them out there uh, next to your home. I've done it, you know. You, you just leave them right there. And obviously you, you have uh, automatic uh, sprinklers. So every so often they get water. And if, if you just leave it there, man, it starts bringing mosquitoes, even tires. Like, I've done it. I went and I kicked the tire. I was like, oh, damn. So, last but not least, what can you do to prevent mosquito breeding in your area? Let me show you my post board. Alright, so remember when I was telling you about the pools? This is an actual notice that they pull in the pool, in the green pool, to let people know that there's a green pool in the back of that residence with mosquitoes in it and they put what, what the product they use to treat that infected pool and the dosage and the time. So um, in a period of time they may have treated the pool but they need to keep coming back or else the mosquitoes are, gonna, are just going to keep coming back. So in, in here I have a brochure that pretty much tells you what, what are the signs to look to protect your residents as much as possible against mosquitoes. So, like I said before, the, you know, the tires in the back, if you have um, some step, some um, bird feeders, you know, they can catch water, they can start reproducing mosquitoes. Some, some lakes in the back, if you have like a little pond or something, like for display purposes, uh, that also breeds mosquitoes. And if you contact your local uh, vector control, they provide you with fish, with um, free mosquito fish. So you don't have to pay for it, you know. So pretty much the, the whole area right here, it, it tells you um, check, check your screen, open cracks, you know, you don't want the mosquitoes coming into the cracks, etc., etc. Um, the, the peak period which you need to protect yourself most is between May and October. I know we're November now, you know, what the hell does this matter now? But, you know, it could also happen in November and any, it could happen any month. And that was according to kidshealth.org. And, you know, if you really want to protect yourself, you bust out what you call your DEET. This is your local mosquito repellent. has to have a 30%, 30% DEET or more. Any lower than that, it's, it's useless. You're basically pouring nothing to yourself. Uh, and I will be passing out some brochures at the end of my speech. So in conclusion, I've gone what West Nile virus is. I've told you which mosquitoes transmit the disease and the sudden rise of West Nile virus in our community and what you can do to protect yourself. Thank you.